We recently looked at cars and minivans that are currently on sale that failed their crash tests. Today we're going to continue with part 2, where we look at SUVs and pickup trucks with equally disappointing results. We'll use three crash tests conducted by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety to make the assessment. First up are small SUVs. In the moderate overlap test, the outgoing Audi Q3 earned a marginal rating. The key shortcomings involved the rear passenger dummy, where the head approached the front seat, heightening the risk of head injuries, and the lap belt shifted from the pelvis to the abdomen, increasing the potential for abdominal injuries. This dummy recorded moderate head or neck injury measures. Although the Buick and Vista and Chevy Trax share a platform, they were crash tested separately and unsurprisingly had similar results in the moderate overlap evaluation. Unlike many rival vehicles, both models exhibited controlled dummy movement. However, they struggled with extremely high injury readings to the rear dummy's head or neck. This dummy's chest also recorded a moderate risk of injuries. In the updated moderate overlap front test, the Ford Bronco Sport received an overall marginal rating. Primary concerns focused on the rear passenger, including the lap belt migrating from the pelvis onto the abdomen, which elevated the risk of injuries, and a temporary restriction in the side curtain airbag deployment during the crash. This dummy's head or neck and chest measures signaled moderate injury risks. The Ford Escape struggled in many areas in the side evaluation. The structure has moderate intrusion. The main issue, though, is the inadequate driver head protection. We can see this dummy's head largely miss the airbags and strike the windowsill hard. The driver dummy also recorded a high risk of torso and pelvis injuries. The rear passenger dummy experienced moderate torso and pelvis injury readings. In the moderate overlap evaluation, the Honda CRV scored the lowest rating of poor. The CRV had serious issues with dummy control in this test. The rear dummy submarined under the lap belt. To make matters worse, the shoulder belt moved too close to the neck. The rear dummy also recorded a moderate risk of injury to the chest. If that all isn't bad enough, during the crash, the rear seat pan brackets also deformed, which destabilized the seat. This Kia Seltos earned the second lowest rating of marginal in the side test. It offers noticeably less survival space than most of the competition. Even worse, the driver dummy recorded troubling injury risks, including very high pelvis and moderate torso readings. The rear dummy also sustained high torso injury risks. These results highlight deficiencies in the Seltos' ability to manage severe side collisions. In the moderate overlap test, the Lexus UX earned a marginal rating. The deficiencies were centered on the rear dummy, whose head came close to the front seat, raising head injury risks, while the shoulder belt shifted upward toward the neck and the lap belt moved from the pelvis to the abdomen, both compromising restraint effectiveness and increasing injury potential. The Nissan Kicks received a poor rating in the moderate overlap scenario. The seatbelts allowed the rear dummy to get too close to the front seat. These seatbelts also failed to stay properly positioned. The shoulder belt shifted too high towards the dummy's neck, and the lap belt slid from the pelvis to the abdomen. This dummy experienced a moderate risk of injuries to the head or neck and chest. The Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross earned a poor rating in the moderate overlap evaluation due to high risks for the rear passenger. This dummy's head came too close to the front seat. While the shoulder and lap belts remained properly positioned, the injury readings are a major cause for concern. The dummy recorded a high risk to the head or neck and chest. To make matters worse, the Eclipse Cross received a poor rating in the side test. It exhibited a concerning amount of intrusion. The driver dummy has a very high risk of torso injuries and high risk of pelvis injuries. The rear passenger dummy also experienced high torso injury readings. These results indicate a critical failure in this test. In the updated moderate overlap front test, the Volkswagen Taos received a marginal rating. The rear passenger dummy experienced a moderate risk of chest injury. This dummy's head also approached the front seat, which amplified the potential for head injuries. Next are midsize SUVs. In the moderate overlap test, the Cadillac XT6 earned a rating of poor. The rear passenger performance was inadequate, featuring a moderate risk of injury to the head or neck and a likely risk of chest trauma. To make matters worse, 
the lap belt shifted from the pelvis onto the abdomen, thereby elevating the potential for injuries. Unfortunately, we're not done with the XT6. In the side impact evaluation, it also received a poor rating. The structure and safety cage maintained good integrity, and the driver dummy showed good protection across head or neck, torso, and pelvis regions. But the rear passenger dummy recorded dangerously high torso injury readings. In the moderate overlap evaluation, the Ford Bronco earned a marginal rating. The rear passenger dummy showed vulnerabilities that contributed to the low score, including moderate head or neck and chest injury risks. In the small overlap scenario, the Dodge Durango exhibited significant intrusion, with up to 30 centimeters in the lower compartment and 21 centimeters in the upper one. This level of intrusion exposed the left leg and foot to high injury readings. Additionally, the dummy's head rolled off the airbag, and the side curtain airbag did not extend far enough forward to shield the head from contacting hard surfaces. The outgoing Hyundai Palisade received the lowest rating of poor in the moderate overlap evaluation, with its rear seat belts being the main source of trouble. The shoulder belt shifted too close to the dummy's neck, while the lap belt slid from the pelvis onto the abdomen. This combination of seat belt shifting reduced the effectiveness of the restraints to control dummy movement. Additionally, the dummy registers a moderate risk of chest injuries. Hopefully the new Palisade addresses these shortcomings. The regular and L versions of the Jeep Grand Cherokee earned a poor rating in the moderate overlap test. Unlike the Palisade, its restraints generally manage dummy movement well, except for the seat belts permitting the rear dummy's head to come too close to the front seat. However, this dummy experienced high head or neck and chest injury readings. During rebound, the rear seat dummy's head precariously moved outside the side curtain airbag. This is extremely unsafe because it leaves the head vulnerable to striking hard surfaces during a crash. The Wrangler is arguably the most dramatic vehicle to ever undergo testing in the small overlap evaluation. It unbelievably flipped onto its side. This is both an unexpected and unacceptable outcome for a frontal collision and greatly increases the risk for injuries. The dummy's lower left leg and foot experienced high crash forces. In all, the Wrangler's performance in this test is a spectacular failure, and it scored the second lowest rating of marginal. In the moderate overlap test, the Kia Sorento received an overall marginal rating. The rear passenger performance was undermined by marginal restraints and dummy kinematics, primarily due to the lap belt shifting from the pelvis onto the abdomen, which increased the risk of injuries. Additionally, this dummy exhibited moderate head or neck injury measures. The Lexus RX earned a rating of poor in the moderate overlap scenario. It has significant issues with rear seat dummy control. The lap belt allowed the dummy to submarine under it, while the shoulder belt moved too high towards the dummy's neck. This dummy also measured high chest injury readings. In the moderate overlap test, the Nissan Aria earned a marginal rating. Unlike so many vehicles, the passenger's lap and shoulder belts remained properly positioned throughout the crash. The dummy's head remained a safe distance from the front seat. However, this dummy recorded high chest injury risks, which undermined the overall performance. The Toyota Highlander earned a rating of marginal in the moderate overlap evaluation. The primary issue is that the rear dummy's seatbelt shifted from the pelvis onto the abdomen, elevating the risk of injury. This dummy also experienced moderate head or neck injury risks. The Volkswagen Atlas also received a rating of marginal in the same test. The rear dummy's head came very close to the driver's seat. This dummy experienced a moderate risk of head or neck and chest injuries. What's peculiar about the Atlas is the dummy's right leg also recorded a high likelihood of injuries, something that rarely happens in modern vehicles in this test. Now let's look at large SUVs. In the moderate overlap test, the Audi Q8 scored a marginal rating. The rear passenger restraints and dummy kinematics were compromised, with the lap belt shifting from the pelvic position onto the abdomen, heightening the risk of injuries. This dummy also experienced a moderate risk of chest injury. The Chevy Tahoe received the lowest rating of poor in the moderate overlap evaluation. As we've seen with many vehicles, the rear dummy's lap belt dangerously slid up onto the abdomen. This dummy also recorded a high risk of head or neck injuries and a moderate risk of chest injuries. In the small overlap scenario, 
the Ford Expedition's structure completely failed. Look how dramatic the collapse is on both the driver and passenger sides. Shockingly, both A-pillars separated from the rest of the structure. Intrusion exceeded 50 centimeters on both sides of the vehicle, a remarkably poor showing. The real-world implications are frightening. This failure not only increases the risk of injuries in the expedition, but leaves very little survival space for the occupants. The driver dummy recorded a high risk of injury to the right leg and a moderate risk to the left one. To make matters worse, the driver dummy slipped off the airbag, leaving its head vulnerable to making contact with intruding structural material. The expedition received a rating of marginal for both the driver and passenger sides. The expedition also received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap test. The seatbelts do a good job controlling rear dummy movement, but they exert moderate chest injury forces on the dummy. Unlike most other vehicles, the side curtain airbags failed to deploy. This increases the risk of the occupant being partially ejected or striking hard surfaces in the cabin. The Jeep Wagoneer also earns a marginal rating in the moderate overlap evaluation. The restraints worked well to control rear seat dummy movement. However, like in the Expedition, elevated seatbelt forces resulted in a moderate injury risk to the chest. Up next are small pickups. The Chevy Colorado received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap scenario. The passenger dummy's seatbelt remained properly positioned throughout the crash. However, this dummy's head approached the front seat. This dummy also measured moderate injury risks to the head or neck and chest. In the moderate overlap test, the Ford Maverick earned a marginal rating. The rear passenger dummy's head approached the front seat, thereby increasing the risk of head injuries. Additionally, the lap belt migrated from its ideal position on the pelvis to the abdomen. The Hyundai Santa Cruz also received a marginal rating in the same test. The rear dummy's head came close to the front seat. This dummy also experienced a moderate risk of injury to the head or neck. The shoulder belt also shifted upward toward the dummy's neck, undermining the performance of the rear restraints. Finally, let's look at large pickups. In the moderate overlap test, the Ford F-150 earned a poor rating. Significant issues emerged with the rear passenger dummy, including high risk of head or neck and chest injury potential. The shoulder belt shifted upward toward the neck, and the lap belt migrated onto the abdomen, both compromising restraint effectiveness and leading to poor dummy kinematics for the rear occupant. The Ford F-150 Lightning also received a poor rating in the moderate overlap scenario. The passenger's lap and shoulder belts both shifted from their ideal positions, increasing the potential for injuries. This dummy also experienced moderate injury risks to the head or neck and high risks to the chest. As we saw with the Bronco Sport, the side curtain airbag was also temporarily restricted during its deployment. In the passenger small overlap evaluation, the Chevy Silverado received a marginal rating. Extensive intrusion into the passenger compartment compromised the survival space, resulting in a high risk of injury to the right leg and a moderate risk to the left one. In the moderate overlap scenario, the Silverado earned a poor rating. The driver's head struck the steering wheel forcefully through the airbag, elevating the risk of head injuries. The rear dummy faced moderate risks to the head or neck and chest. Additionally, this dummy's lap belt shifted from the pelvis to the abdomen on the rear dummy. If you found this video interesting, you'll love this next one, where we explore the remarkable progress in auto safety over the last decade. Thanks for watching.